I work at Google, I work at Canberra, I work at such and such a company. What is their perception about what it's like to work there? Um, that's what that brand recognition is. Times are tough. Their company has their back. Their leaders have their back. Their teammates have their back. Um, then I think that's where you can really start to make uh, really advancements into building a strong culture, empowering us to take our skills and be a force for good in our community. So whether that's volunteering days or partnering with charities with uh, high impact collaboration so the easiest way to assess how good someone is for a role is looking at their current job title and the current company um, and that's kind of the easy yes or no fact he should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause and say here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well We are here with Mike Rubio, talent acquisition partner for Canva. Canva is an Australian grown graphic design platform used to help both creative and non-creative minds create visually enticing content. Mike is also a career coach and is passionate about empowering people's career journeys and helping them live purposeful, impactful lives. I'm so excited to have him on today. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. No worries. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited to be here. Could you start by telling us a little bit more about Canva, your role, and the previous experiences that led you there? Yeah, definitely. So my role at Canva as a talent acquisition partner is where I'm able to help build the team that builds Canva. So we really are on a mission to empower the world to design. So I love that mission. I think we're amplifying the voice of everyday people with the power of visual communication. And you know, being one of the fastest growing software companies our two-step plan is to uh, become one of the most valuable companies so that we can do the most good that we can. Um, so there's a lot of things I guess, that led me to this point, but one of them was being in recruitment agency, um, realizing that we need to think outside of the box when it comes to hiring. You know, the, the ways of hiring previously in the last five, 10 years aren't working anymore. It's more competitive than ever. We need to think outside the box, get more creative in that approach. Uh, and yet, ultimately, that's what kind of really led me to Canberra along with the values alignment. Now, there has been a shift in the last few years on how the workforce views what a strong company culture looks like. People are starting to see, to be able to see kind of that separate, that nice to have perks that contribute to a fun company atmosphere versus those must have tangible manifestations of company values that contribute to defining a healthy and long lasting company culture. I'd love if you could share from your perspective, how do you define company culture? What is the heart of it? What is it not? And what are ways that companies can define, measure, and make sure they're hitting their culture goals? Great question. I love this quote, and it says, culture equals values and behavior. And I think that really speaks to it. You know, it's easy to put a bunch of mottos and put our marketing collateral about our culture is all about this, our values are all about this. But ultimately, what are the values that are lived out and acted out? What are we measuring as a, t as a team, as a company? Um, what are people getting held accountable to? Is it more about profits and performance or are people getting held accountable to living out their values, acting in uh, ways in the business world that lines up with those values? Um, and when it comes to kind of defining staff culture and what really standout culture is. Um, I was really thinking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and kind of equating it to that, that pyramid of needs. And I think where a lot of people, a lot of teams and companies spend so much time and effort is the, the base level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's all about physiological needs, things like air, shelter, food and water. Um, a lot of companies really invest heavily financially into office space, food, beverages, drinks, um, and really, that doesn't equal good staff culture. It can be a good tool that you can use to help that. Um, but if you kind of go up one level in that pyramid, uh, he talks about safety needs. And I think about in staff culture, psychological safety is a really key pillar, foundational building block. You can't have a good culture without psychological safety. So if your team are fearing being publicly torn down for making a mistake or if they're worried about their teammates stabbing them in the back to climb that corporate ladder, um, it's impossible to have good staff culture. Then on the flip side, if you build psychological safety into your teams and they know even when times are tough, their company has their back, their leaders have their back, their teammates have their back, um, then I think that's where you can really start to make uh, really advancements into building a strong culture. 
And I think the next kind of level up in that pyramid is love and belonging. So if you really want to create an amazing staff culture, this is where you can really stand out. Um, And the question I'd be asking yourself is, do your team feel like they really belong? Do they feel welcome and accepted and really part of the team? Uh, Do they have that kind of human connection or is it you know, when you're jumping on your Zoom calls or your whatever it is, whether it's meeting in person or meeting remotely, is it all about work? Is it all about the bottom line, the KPIs? Or are you still creating time for that human connection? And, you know, today's world of work with such a distributed global workforce, it is harder to have those human connections, build those relationships. And so I think that's something that we need intentionality around. Um, and then right at the pointy end of the pyramid, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs talks about esteem. And I think this is where, again, you can stand out. So do your team feel respected? Mm-hmm. Does it feel like the craft is taken seriously? And are they being recognized for their contributions and their effort? Um, are their team being celebrated? I love in Australia, we recently had some um, news about one of our world famous swimming coaches, Dean Boxall. And he just throws these ridiculous celebrations when his athletes win a gold medal or when they break a world record. Um, and it's, you know, it's gone kind of viral, but he's the best example of celebrating his team's wins. Um, I hate sport. I hate swimming. Um, but I would be swimming with him cheering me on. Um, and then I think the last kind of the top of that pyramid is self-actualization. And the question I'll be asking around here is, do your team feel empowered to be their best self at work? Is there an opportunity for career growth? Can they work on projects outside of the normal work to expand their breadth? Um, and are their strengths really being fully utilized? So I think if you, know, if you were to evaluate how is our staff culture, how is our company culture in those kind of levels, we can kind of get that baseline foundational pillars set in stone and then work on those really key moments where you can create that outstanding staff culture experiences within the team. Now, I've seen at Canva that you guys are super open, driven, and accountable in terms of the values you uphold. Let's dive a little deeper into that. Unpack for us the values Canva upholds as a company and what you guys are doing to make sure that these values are resonating with and perpetuating throughout the company. Yeah, I love that. Uh, We've got really strong reliance on our values for sure. They are be a force for good, pursue excellence, be a good human, Mm -hmm. make complex things simple, set crazy big goals and make them happen. Um, I think a lot of those values would resonate with a lot of different companies. What I think really stands out for me, you know, once joined Canva and seeing how things operate is the value to be a force for good. Uh, I think that kind of empower others, that kind of encapsulates so much of what we're trying to do as a company, obviously, there's the business side of things, there's a the product side and software and all of that. Um, but all of this really is a driver for us to be a force for good, to empower the world, to design and to make the world a better place. So what I've loved seeing joining Canva is seeing how this is really led from our founders, really led from the top down. Um, and we see this kind of regularly, uh, these big displays of um, investing in charities and startups, investing Mm -hmm. with our product and giving away so much value in our premium product for free to to education, charities, for -for non-for-profits, for people that really are on the ground doing the work that needs to be done to make the world a better place. We really want to empower them in doing that. Um, We're not trying to make profit from those kind of um, situations either. I've seen again and again, you know, our leaders – set by example, but also empower us to do that. So just simple things like empowering us to take our skills and be a force for good in our community. So whether that's volunteering days or partnering with charities with uh, high impact collaboration. So yeah, I think that's really where what sets our, our values apart, I think. Next, I want to move into employer branding. I think in some ways this has become a little bit of a buzzword, but I do believe that understanding the heart of it really, really matters. So I'd love if you could dive into defining what employer brand means to you and what are the building blocks for creating a strong one? Yeah, great question. I think it's so important too. From a recruitment point of view, especially, I've seen how much of a difference having a strong employer brand makes. Um, So when it comes to defining employer brand, I'd say... Simply, it's kind of what people's perception is of what it's like to work at a company. So if you said to someone, I work at Google, I work at Canva, I work at such and such a company, what is their perception about what it's like to work there? Um, That's what that brand recognition is. Um, But I think uh, what apart from that is uh, the perception that people have, having a strong employer brand is 
all about authenticity. So, you know, as companies get larger and they get bigger budgets, it can be very easy to splash a good budget at a marketing agency and create something that looks really slick, uh, got happy smiling faces on it. But people can see through inauthenticity. Uh, and I think building a strong employer brand needs to be about having authenticity as key. Uh, some of the building blocks to creating a strong employer brand are putting the candidate at the heart of the story. So not just about showing how good you are, how good your company is, but kind of weaving the person who's reading about your company, how can they be weaved into the story themselves? Um, so I think building things like behind the scenes stories are so important. Um, what are the people really saying? Not just the um, marketing actors or anything like that. Like what's the behind the scenes story? I want to see the nitty gritty. I want to see the, the handheld video of someone being interviewed that's not professionally published because then I feel like I'm getting a real sense of the authentic story there. I love that. Taking people as close to the in-person experience as possible. So now after a company spends time investing in defining their building blocks and the fundamentals of their employer brand, what do you think are the most effective platforms for companies to utilize um, and get across their employer brand and how should they be utilizing these platforms? Yeah, great question. I think LinkedIn is the obvious one. Uh, I think it's good to have a lot of stuff coming out from employer brand on LinkedIn. But I would say more than just the company page promoting, you know, marketing collateral for their employer brand, ticking the box. Uh, I think having it led by the individuals, by the leaders, by the team members themselves, letting them share their stories authentically about how their experience at a certain company has been. I think that's where you're going to get a lot more traction on LinkedIn. Uh, I've seen this before, you know, the, the well-polished marketing collateral actually often doesn't perform that well, whereas just a real human story about someone's experience working at a company uh, has so much more authenticity and cut through. Um, I think the question is, the question to ask yourself is, you know, people want to know how will I feel working there? Will I belong? Will I be able to have impact? And will my work be connected to purpose and meaning? So um, in terms of, you know, different places and different platforms and different content, definitely video is key. Uh, behind the scenes, personal stories, authentic human connection, I think is what you want to try and build. Um, what I really enjoyed personally when I was interviewing at Canva was Canva's Instagram page as well. Um, I was kind of checking their Canva life page every day because Every day there'd be kind of updates on behind the scenes, what the food is, what the dog's in the office, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, for me, that really helped me get really excited through the interview process and um, think about what it's going to be actually like to, to work at a company like that. Um, but I, I think, it too, it's good to think outside the box of just your social media. That's definitely one key avenue. Uh, but, you know, if I was thinking about a full employer brand strategy, I'd be looking at activating an ambassador program with our current team members, looking at alumni programs and then events, webinars and different sponsorship events as well to build that employer brand. I'm switching gears a little bit. You have been on both the agency side of recruitment and now the in-house side of it. From all your experiences in talent acquisition, what mindsets do you believe are most important for both recruiters and hiring managers to hold when filling open roles? Yeah, I think important mindsets to hold. Um, I'd maybe be challenging some of the perception around bias of backgrounds when it comes mm -hmm. to recruiting for certain roles and starting to evaluate key skills and how those skills can be transferable across. So I've seen some candidates come from kind of your exact typical predicted career path and come into a role and actually do really poorly in a role. Uh, and then I've seen other people come from completely left field, the wrong industry, the wrong kind of role title previously, uh, but they've got the right skills and they've got the right attitude and they've done amazingly in a role. Um, this can be hard because, you know, typically recruiters, the easiest way to assess how good someone is for a role is looking at their current job title and the current company. Um, and that's kind of the easy yes or no factor. But I think if we get a level deeper and look at, you know, what are the skills that are actually needed? What are the attitudes that we need? What kind of mentality does someone need to come to be able to succeed in this team? Uh, and then definitely challenging the perception and mindset around value add rather than culture add uh, or culture fit, sorry. So, you know, it's something that I think everyone's kind of seen that shift of, you know, people hiring only to have the same kind of culture. We want someone to be a good culture fit. I think we're done with those days. We want to build diverse teams. We want people to add to the value, add to the culture that we have in that team already. 
Now, at Solvable, we're all about understanding what drives purpose and meaning for people at work. For us, for us, that's super important to be able to understand this. So we're able to create that company candidate fit that promotes the growth and longevity. I know that you're a strong proponent of purposeful career decision making. So what is your advice on finding purpose and meaning at work? How do people need to look at work to make sure they're seeing it as more than just a means to an end? Yeah, I love the way you phrase that. How do people see work? Uh, how do they they envision? I think that's so important. For me, My first, I remember my first job out of high school, I worked at a pizza shop and I was spending you know, four to five hours a day making dough. And it was a really, it was kind of like a graveyard shift. There was no one else in the office. There was no customers, no other staff members. I couldn't have music. It was literally just me and these big chunks of dough that I was rolling, eating. Um, and you know, it was, it was kind of crushing my soul a little bit. It's like, oh, I left high school with so much ambition and passion. And now I'm just making dough for, people. um, but you know, it wasn't until I heard, you know, overheard this conversation with a little family and the dad whispers to the kid that, you know, we're having pizza for dinner. Um, and I heard the squeal of excitement from the little kid that they're having pizza party for dinner. Um, I realized, you know, the impact that I'm having, I can't see necessarily directly, but it's creating a space for your exhausted dad and mum to have a fantastic Friday movie night with their family, to create these beautiful family memories where they don't have to slave away in the kitchen, they don't have to clean up, they can just kick back with their family and have some quality time. So for me, I was able to tie that kind of end user impact that I was having to making those. So while it was a really monotonous job, um, it was still having an important impact in other people's lives. Um, and I think about this flower guy, uh, you know, when we talk about monotonous jobs and finding purpose and meaning, um, I don't know if it's the same in the US, but I, I don't often drive past people selling flowers and feel quite sorry for them. They're on the side of the road. It seems quite boring just watching hundreds of cars go past. Uh, but there's this one man I used to drive past every day on the, on the way to work, and he had this ridiculously large um, Mexican poncho, uh, Mexican hat, and every single person that went past him, he would be waving and smiling and giving thumbs up to. Uh, and so every day, I walked, uh, every day I drove past him, I'd wave to him, give him a thumbs up, uh, and for the next five minutes I had this ridiculous grin on my face. <laughs> I never bought flowers from him. I was never one of his customers. He made an impact in my day in such a simple way. Um, so I think sometimes it's not always about changing companies or changing career goals. Um, I think to find purpose in your work, you can find purpose wherever you are and whatever you're doing. If you link your work to the end user um, and then to excellence as well. And I'll kind of finish this answer with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. that I love. And it says this, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. I love that quote. So I think that kind of answers answers that question from my point of view. Oh, goodness, Mike. I love that response so much. Last question for you. What drives purpose, meaning, and satisfaction for you at Canva? Yeah, great question. I think for me, being able to make a positive impact in people's lives is really what drives that purpose, drives that meaning, uh, really gets me excited about what I'm doing. So uh, I want to be able to see the individual, but also my hope and ambition is to be able to impact like a large audience as well, to be able to make a positive impact on their their lives, their worlds, their world of work, help them level up their careers. So um, in recruitment, that's sometimes really easy to see sometimes it's quite hard to see you know a good majority a good percentage of our job is actually declining candidates that apply um which can be quite you know disheartening at times but um, that's why i love doing career coaching and giving away career advice and trying to help people in that process because you know everyone is able to level up their job their career and find purpose and meaning in the work that they're doing so they can yeah make a better difference in the world Mike, thank you so much for being on with us today. If you guys don't already, make sure you follow, check out Mike's LinkedIn page. Um, he has a lot of great advice, content on navigating through your career journey. Thank you all for listening to Architects of Contemporary Hiring. 